Hey all, and I'm going to be covering some tips and early game strategies for the 3.0 version of Eternal Fury. So this is quite a bit different to version 2.5. There's a few similarities though. It's a bit quicker to get everything done, mainly because there's no dragon's treasure. So let's start with some of the absolute basics. Most of the things in the game can actually be blitzed. So you want to try and get as far as possible in these dungeons. I haven't unlocked the relic dungeon yet and then just click auto blitz each day. This only takes a few seconds. Very quick way to get rewards. Same with the trial dungeon, just click auto blitz. And the Colosseum. Quick challenge as there's no one that I can really take. They're all pretty much the same battle rating as myself. So there we go, that's quite a lot of stuff gained very quickly just from using Auto Blitz. So as with similar games of this style, you want to try and get your devotion or activity up to the maximum amount. This can be done very, very quickly on Eternal Fury 3.0. I've already completed most of these quests just from Blitzing. There we go. So that shouldn't take you more than five to 10 minutes to get the activity maxed out. And then you can actually upgrade your fairy in time once you've got the activity done. So if we do have a look at a few of the things on the activity list. Let's start with the salute. So that's actually in the rankings. Most important thing to note about this is you can actually salute yourself. Now I don't know what you actually get for gaining salutes, however you do get gold for saluting, so you might as well just click on yourself and then use the salutes on yourself to be honest. Hopefully a purpose for gaining salutes will be found out later on in the game. Okay so now I'm going to go onto the trial dungeon, I'm going to show you a few things in battle that you may not know about. These are both quite important, so if we start the battle, I can't actually defeat this enemy. You may have seen the battling is pretty slow in this game. If you have a look here, there's an X1 button. If you press that, it goes on to X2 and then it goes on to double speed like so. And you can put it back on times one speed if you want to. I highly recommend having the game on times two speed at all times. I also do not recommend using auto mode as you tend to use some really weird skills that you don't need at times. It's pretty much just random what your character actually uses when it feels random anyway. So I don't recommend using auto mode. And the final thing is if you press the button here, you will immediately quit out of the battle. Now I might have actually had a chance of winning this battle but I'm just doing this to show you, once all the turns are done, if you press that button it comes up with the failure screen and then you back out like so. So that's something to bear in mind if you know you're not going to win the battle. So looking at the heroes or mercenaries feature as it was called in the original version 2.5, if we go here you may have realised you can't actually get the SSR heroes from the soul shop. That means you can only get them from the pieces you get from summoning. For that reason, early on, I highly recommend just upgrading some SR mercenaries or heroes, whatever you want to call them. You should have got the Dragon Slayer for free. That's actually a really powerful hero, by far the most powerful out of all of them I've managed to get so far, but early on I'd recommend just getting a team of SR heroes and trying to upgrade those. Note that there's a cap on how far you can upgrade based on your star ranking, so you are going to need to promote and enhance your heroes. Also don't forget to work on the war soul. I have been putting this into my most powerful hero out of all of them, which is the Dragon Slayer. So you may have seen I am a mage, I decided to go as a priest. 
So therefore I have the healing skills rather than the support attacking skills. It's hard to say which is better but some of these skills are really useful. The hard part is getting enough rage to use them during battle. Like this skill here. If you attack the targets marked by this you regain your health and it hits all the enemies. So that's actually a really good skill. And for that reason I have been working on that one. Stormbolt is pretty much essential as well. You need to use that every battle pretty much. Again that's why this is level 8 and why I've been working on that. I will also probably work on the Heart of Divine skill. Try and get that as high as possible as well. The other skills I'm not so fussed about. The Blessed Sword is sort of okay. Increases attack by a small amount. That you very rarely get enough rage to use so I've not really been bothering with that too much. And Holy Prayer, that's okay. Doesn't use too much rage. A basic healing skill. But I think Stormbolt and Repentance are probably the two most important ones as a priest, which is why I've been working on both of those. So let's have a look at the runes feature. I have been working on my runes. To start with, you just want to get as many orange runes as you can and then fit them in all the slots. Then once you have all the slots filled with orange runes, you can look at which ones are better for the characters and then decide what you want to go with. At this stage though, I'm not really too fussed about what runes each character has as I don't have many orange ones. They're all the orange ones that I have spare. So let's do a bit of praying. You don't very often get orange runes, however, you might as well just recycle everything up to purple. Also don't forget to recycle the EXP runes as those can't actually be used. There we go. So once you have recycled enough runes, you will be able to upgrade one of them with Stardust. Now for the Dragon Slayer, I'm probably going to focus on health. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the rune like I've just done there. I may also focus on hit. I'm not 100% sure what all these runes exactly do yet, but... I'm sure I'll find out more about that as the game progresses. So I will have a quick look at the friends feature as well. This seems a bit weird. I managed to get up to 26 friends. It seems like when you reach 20 friends you can't add any more. So what you want to do is wait until you have 19 friends then click the add all button here and you should take yourself over the limit. It's a bit strange though that you can't have that many friends on this game so you want to be quite careful who you add and get rid of any inactive players. So most of the other features to upgrade are pretty straightforward in the game. There's a red dot there when you can upgrade. Most of the time you just press one button to upgrade as well like here just enhance or quick enhance if you want. Sometimes the mount screen glitches up like it's done here, in which case you'll need to reload before you can upgrade your mount. The reason I'm using the lion is because, well, it looks nice in my opinion. I prefer that over the horse or whatever that is. So that's something to bear in mind. And you might as well keep on using your scrolls on any that you can upgrade. You get more scrolls than you really need. I've only been playing for under two weeks and already I have too many scrolls and can't upgrade any more of those. So if we have a look at the shop you may have noticed most of the items in the game can only be bought with the pink diamonds. As someone who does not intend to spend money on the game that's a slight problem. If we go to here though you have a few items you can use the blue diamonds for. Near the start of the game you probably want to get the empowered sapphires so you can upgrade your equipment. I'm going to go ahead and buy a few now. I'll just buy 10 for now. These are not that easy to get and that will allow you to 
upgrade and enchant your equipment early on. So you may have noticed there are monsters around the maps. You can actually go to any of the maps even if you don't have the level requirement. For example, I can go to the level 70 to 80 map even though I'm only level 45. That's something to bear in mind. Now when farming enemies, I quite like the Frigid Glacier. The rewards here seem decent. They seem a bit better than the other places, so yeah, I've been farming here. Very, very, very occasionally you will get blue diamonds from the enemies that you encounter here as well. I'm going to guess you can get blue diamonds from any of the maps, but I've only had it from the glacier. I recommend using stamina to fight enemies rather than on the campaign as you seem to get better stuff especially early on in the game. You also have a chance of blue diamonds, which is always good. And finally, if you're ever going to go AFK, just click the button here and start mining. You will be surprised at what you can actually get from this. It takes a long time, but you actually get some decent rewards like gold chests, etc. So whenever you're going to be away for a few hours or so, just hit that button and leave it mining. And you'll be surprised at what you actually get from doing that. And there we go, that about covers this video. I hope that helps with the game. Just some very basic tips for the game and how to do okay early on. If you did enjoy this video, leaving a like and subscribing to the channel is always appreciated. Thank you to those that have already subscribed to the channel. There's a few other videos on the screen you may enjoy as well. Feel free to check those out if you want to do so. And thanks for watching.